What is up, everybody? Craig Doty here from Grappler Media. Today, I am so excited to show you my first workflow using the new IVR or interactive voice response feature inside of High Level. Now, disclaimer, this is essentially the same IVR setup that is shown in the High Level Knowledge Base already, but with my own added little twists. Now, I don't know about you, but this has been a long-awaited feature release for me. And even though it's been out for a couple of weeks now, I've been so busy with AI agents and AI chatbots that I only just got around to messing with this yesterday. And that was mainly because I wanted to build this out for a restaurant client of mine. All right, so let's get into it. Now, uh, obviously, you have to start with the trigger. Now, uh, the only option you'll have will be to choose your LC phone number from the drop-down list. Uh, if you have multiple, uh, or if you just have one, you'll just see that one number. Now, before I get into these other elements, uh, I just want to review the basic flow so you understand what's going on here. This is exactly like the basic setup that's shown in high level. The call comes in and triggers the workflow's first step. Uh, the first step is gather input on call. Uh, in this step, uh, you basically play the initial welcome message. So once again, the call comes in and triggers the message. We say, hello, thank you for calling Nana's Kitchen. Press one to request a reservation. Press two to leave a message. Press three to hear about Nana's Kitchen's upcoming entertainment. After that is an if else condition, and this is where you map out the digits that you want the customer to press. You know, click here and select the correct gather input on call step. And then select digits is and the number, in this case, number one. Then add another branch, select digits is the number two, and you just continue on like so. Okay, so now you would go through and create all of the actions that will be triggered by someone pressing, you know, the corresponding keys. So when they press number one, the first action is to say or play a message, and we're choosing to say a message. Uh, in other words, it'll be spoken by a computer-generated voice. Our message in this case is, thank you for your interest in making a reservation at Nana's Kitchen. Please hold while we connect you to the manager. Uh, after that message plays, we use the Connect Call IVR feature to connect the call by routing it to the appropriate staff member. And now below that is another if else condition. And in the case that the line is busy, the call gets canceled for some reason, or uh, if it simply goes unanswered, this will route the call to the next step. So the call status is busy or canceled or no answer. They get the sorry message, which is another say, slash play message uh, where we play the message sorry no one is available to take your call at the moment please record your message after the beep press the pound key to stop recording then just to get a little fancy uh, we add another say or play element but this time we're going to actually play a recorded beep sound that we've uploaded uh, and then the next step leads to the record voicemail feature that allows the customer, client, patient, whatever it may be, to leave a voicemail message that will then show up in your conversations tab. And for good measure, I added an internal notification just to let somebody know that there was a message left behind. All right, now that we've gotten through that, let's move on. If they press the number two, they'll go through the same sequences as we just went through at the end of pressing number one, but uh, with a different message here, we say, please record your voice message after the beep, press the pound key to stop recording. Then we send them to hear the beep. 
send them to record their voicemail and send off our notification. Finally, if they press the number three, this one's easy. Uh, we're just going to say a message that gives them the venue's entertainment schedule for the month. Uh, now, remember, these messages can be computer generated voices or they can be recorded by you or someone else and uploaded like the beep sound effect. Great. So to be clear, uh, so far, we're only focusing on one side of the workflow. Uh, so far, I've shown you how the flow goes for pressing the one, two and three. Now we have this backup section for any invalid inputs. Uh, first, we say a message. Sorry, you have entered an invalid input. Please listen to the options again and make a valid selection. Then you're going to use the gather input on call IVR feature again and basically say the same thing as the original welcome message, but slightly modified. We'll say hello, first name. Thank you. Please choose from the following options. Press one to make a reservation. Press two to leave a message. Press three to hear Nana's upcoming entertainment schedule. Uh, now, I also want to point out that when you use this custom field for client's first name, you know, if they're already in your system, it's going to say their name. So, you know, it makes it a little more personal, uh, even though it's coming from a computer generated voice. All right, then naturally uh, we flow down to another if else condition where we're going to map out the digits that will be pressed again and it flows down to the actions. And this time, if there is an invalid input, uh, it's just going to give up. Oh, I see a problem here. Uh, I never deleted this uh, particular message. So, okay, uh, I fixed it. I deleted the second message and just left one that says, sorry, you have entered an invalid input. Please call again. Thank you. Alrighty then, that brings us back to the beginning and what I might say was sort of the point of this whole thing, uh, these first two steps. This first action is not even necessary, but uh, I just like to read the date as month, day, year. So I use this element to set the date and time format. Um, you can use this. It also has some other actions that uh, I'm sure will be useful down the line. Now this next element only came about because uh, after I had this set up, the restaurant let me know that uh, they actually have somebody in charge of booking events. And she's also taking the reservations during the time when the restaurant is closed. And the table availability becomes fluid, you know, once the restaurant opens. Uh, so once the restaurant does open, all the reservation requests have to go directly to the hostess that's on site and you know aware of the table availability. So with this if else statement, we can say on these days, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, and you know, it's on or after 5 p.m. and before 10 p.m., then we can route the calls to the restaurant instead of the booking manager and you know the rest is all the same uh, I only changed you know where I was forwarding the calls and I, I changed the messaging to say hostess instead of manager that's really the only difference so there you have it my first IVR setup on high level uh, for a client uh, you know, I started with the basic setup that you can find in the high level knowledge base, like I said, uh, but then the client threw me a little curveball. Um, but overall, nothing that couldn't be handled by a simple if else condition. So anyway, I hope that uh, maybe you learned something from this video. Uh, I actually found a few mistakes that I made along the way, which is a good thing. Uh, you know, stay tuned for more videos from me. And if you don't have a high level account yet, please uh, use my link in the description, my affiliate link, 
Uh, anybody who joins through my link will get uh, access to almost all of the snapshots that I have. Till next time, uh, wishing you all the best. Take care.